Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. All right, shame on me. As I've been shooting the past couple of videos, I've been talking about stuff and then not actually showing you what the hell I'm talking about. So I'm gonna catch everything all in this video. Now, last night's video, I talked about how I changed my studio setup again. Now, not the actual physicality of the physicality, not the actual studio, the way it's physically laid out. Okay, what I'm talking about is like how I have the, the actual filming setup, including the audio and the lights and all that shit. So I'm going to do that right now and I'm going to show you everything and you're going to see it all sitting right here. So there's the studio and now you can see it. it's in broad daylight and I still have the light on and all that kind of stuff. So we all know I put the softbox back up there with the SL60 and I have it hanging from the ceiling, plugged in, blah, 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 blah. And then I have my various setups. So this right here, obviously, is my burning setup. So I have it on this NRL carbon fiber tripod. It also has the center column, which I didn't get at first. And then I have it on a newer carbon fiber gimbal head. And then I have the Sony a7R4 with the grip. And I have the Sony 200 to 600 lens attached to it. And then I got this... Uh, basically a uh, canvasy type raincoat, camouflage raincoat on it for two reasons. Not because I need a raincoat on the lens, but because I want it to camouflage from the birds seeing the gigantic white lens that I'm carrying around because I have noticed that they respond to it when I, when I actually set it up and swing it up. And I also wanted protection on the lens because I'm not walking around in the woods, running into trees and going through bushes and all that kind of stuff. So just a little more protection for the lens. So that is my setup for the birding. And it is done, complete, and I'm not adding anything to it because it's perfect. All right, then here is the Weeble 2. And I have that all set up with that transmitter AI device under there and I use it with the A7C. Now, the problem with this is that it disconnects from the app roughly every 30 seconds to a minute, and it's annoying as all hell, so I haven't touched it since that happened because I was ready to smash it, because you know, I always say I'm always ready to smash stuff because it pisses me off when it doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. So that will go right back over there for now on the little end table here where I throw everything. All right, I wasn't really gonna show you this, but obviously this is my, uh, Jesus, Insta360 1R, and I have it on the selfie stick with a ZDO uh, aluminum tripod feet, and I have the extended battery and all that kind of stuff. This is the, the switch pod, which I use for the A7C when I'm using that in sort of a run and gun filming situation. Now, here is the cine rig setup that I had built. Let me get on this side. When I had the A6600. So I have completely torn that down and rebuilt it to deal with quick on and off of the A7C. So now when I'm in here in the studio, rather than using the ZV-1 that I have I'm using the A7C. And usually the A7C with the Sony 16 to 35 F4 on there. Now I do have the, uh, what is this? The Sennheiser MKE 400, the newer version of it. That's what I usually use connected to the A7C when I'm out walking around with it. But I also have the older version and I'll show you that in a minute. But for now, so here's, it's on a tripod and then I still have this whole contraption built that has the rails on it and everything and the gold mount battery uh, plate so that I can run everything through that and get power. And then obviously I have power and all the things dangling and all that kind of stuff. So I have this fuel world monitor that I use when I connect it up here on the overhead but I don't do that very often because I'm not buying as much now that requires me to have an overhead shot, but it's there if I need it. And then of course, let me swing around here to the other side. Ugh. Okay, so from this direction now, I have my Atomos Ninja V 
sitting there in a small rig cage. And that is one of the things that I changed. Rather than having a cage permanently mounted here or having the camera in a cage permanently mounted there, because remember, I was using two A6600s and one never left this contraption. But now that's not viable and I, I'm not doing that because I'm not going to go out and buy another A7C. So what I did was I changed everything on this contraption so that everything can be disconnected immediately very easily. So I, instead of having the Ninja attached to a monitor mount at the top of the cage up there, what I did was I put it on a magic arm. You can kind of maybe see it in there. The magic arm is then uh, connected down here on this cheese plate. And that way I can just move this wherever I needed to move it and put it wherever I want it. Now, by putting that there, I had to actually move the microphone because I used to have a Movo VXR10 mounted to that contraption, that cheese plate underneath, right underneath the lens. And I didn't like the way that was. And it also couldn't be there because I wanted the monitor here. So I'm still looking straight forward and just a little bit down if I need to check framing or see if I'm in focus or just see what's going on or to make it look like I'm not actually looking at the camera because I do that all the time. Um, but that's why that's there. And that's why I got rid of the mic. And then I thought to myself, well, you know what? I need to move this and hook this all up in a way that I have a mic permanently attached somewhere. And there's no reason why I shouldn't do what everybody else does, which is da -da, attach a mic up right above me. So what I did was I took my older Sennheiser MKE 400 and I hooked it up using GoPro stuff on this GoPro flexible clamp mount. And that way I can move this around and I have it so that it's just off camera and that's right where it needs to be. And then I had this little cable that comes off of it that's attached to it and realized that I was never going to be able to take that and plug it all the way down into here, either into the Ninja or into the camera that I had up there. So I ordered this cable, this Rode cable a uh, mic extension cable, and I ran it all the way down through here, through all the little cable ties and all the way around the back and came up to the side here and plugged it up into that. I also then got a new HDMI cable that was pretty much brand new. I found it in one of my magical drawers, then I had it and, and it works perfectly. And then I have a USB-C cable that comes out of this and goes into, uh, the connection here on that gold mount plate that I have powered go or that I have power going to, or if I put the gold mount battery on there, then it's power, all powered by the battery. So everything goes right there. And then I just took another one of those little cable tie thingamajiggers and put them all together so that I can just unplug that really quickly and then remove the A7C, which is on one of those ARCA clamps. And that's that. Now it's all set. And then my uh, you know, the video I shot last night was done with the audio from this microphone now. And I have already got it in my head that when I start, I turn on the camera, I turn on the Ninja, and I come up here and I turn on the microphone. Then when I'm done, I reach up, I shut off the microphone, I shut off the Ninja, shut off the camera, and then pull the footage off and do my editing. And that is that. And then as you can see, when I'm always talking about the lights and all that stuff, so. Here's what I call the product light for the Aperture MC because that shines directly down onto the table down here. Obviously, you can see the, the Niebuhr SL60 with the soft box that has the grid on it. And then I have my light coming up here from the left, another Aperture MC. So that comes directly down into the camera right onto where I'm sitting. I also have my overhead light which I use for mood lighting. And that's usually what I put in color. So right now it's green for Halloween. And then I put another Aperture MC down there and it's green, although it looks like it's white in the picture here because that hue light, for some reason, once I changed this setup, started giving me all that, that like flicker. And it was annoying the shit out of me when I was looking at it on my footage. So I tried the Aperture and the flicker went away. So that's what I've got going on there. Now, as for what's left down here, you see the Cobra, the iFootage Cobra um, carbon fiber monopod, my other newer 
uh, sort of tripod, not sort of tripod, it is a tripod, but it's the aluminum version. Remember, I got the carbon fiber version and it cracked after an hour of getting it and I dropped my $7,000 setup and caught it before it hit the ground. And then I have my original Manfrotto aluminum tripod with an aluminum gimbal head and it's all heavy as shit. So I don't use it anymore. Now, here's my other ZV-1. And this is the one that I was using in the contraption over there and decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. So now this, I can turn on inadvertently, which I didn't want to do. Um, but yeah, so I now have this to carry around with me and it fits conveniently in, God damn it, I keep turning it on, sorry. All right, so that's off. And then I usually keep a couple of my lenses out here if I'm gonna be putting them on again. So I got the 105 and the 40 millimeter, 2.5, but everything else goes in those bags. Now I usually keep all my still stuff in this bag and it stays there. And then this green bag, this mind shift bag, usually has all of my filming stuff and my on the road bag. So when I go on the road every week, that goes with me and I usually stuff everything into there. And that is pretty much it. At this point now, all my setups are golden. They're good to go. And that's where I keep everything. The only other thing that changes, and here's my think tank setup, and this is what I was talking about. I just can stick my ZV-1 into this pouch. All right, kind of frenetic, just running around here. Wanted to get this shot and show you everything. The only other lens that I have decided that I'm going to buy is the Sony 70-200 f2.8 G Master version 2, which was just released yesterday. So I put my name on the list at Focus Camera, and I guess they're not being released until December. So I figured December, January, I'll, I hopefully will be able to get that lens, and that'll be it. Then I will be done. Now, at some point, I will go through and I will show you all the cameras that I have, all the lenses that I have, why I've chosen those cameras, why I've chosen those lenses, but that's for other videos down the line. This time, I just wanted to show you these setups because I talked about it and I keep forgetting to shoot B-roll and show you what it is. So now you get it in this. That's all I've got for you. I think I've remembered pretty much everything. That's all I'm using these days. So if you have any comments or questions, as always, leave them down below. Of course, as always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, Forward and up.